all right what is going on everyone and welcome back to another black desert video so we are continuing on uh we split the video before and last time we talked about the best spots for xp in this game and we're gonna follow the same concept of the way we looked at everything which is through uh ap from lowest to highest and if you didn't watch the previous video i'll leave a link in the description to that as well and just as a little recap if you're new to your channel I have been playing this game for quite a while. I've grinded basically every spot in this game, and I think I have enough information to be able to tell you which spots I think are good and which ones are, you know, you should just not do it. But, so yeah, last time we talked about best spots for XP. This time we're going to be talking about the best spots for silver. Now, in the past six months when we made this video last, a lot of grind spots got changed, and some spots got in, like, tweaked in terms of more silver, less silver, and some spots gotten easier because they thought like it was too hard, so they kind of toned things down. So I think it'd be a good time to update these videos, especially since right now we have a fat 100% drop rate bonus and a nice 1000% XP bonus. This is probably the best time to make these videos, so if you have no idea where to grind, hopefully this video helps. So with that said, I am going to start with... Um, probably around 100 ish area because if you are a new player and you are playing on seasons for the first time season gear goes up to like 230 to 250 i guess depending on how many journals and all the stuff you have uh on the side but um usually people are able to get to like 230 without too much trouble so i wanted to go through everything by lowest to highest ap and then we'll do a recap by region. So I, hopefully this is organized in a way. So, um, I'll talk about things in terms of trash drops and rare items that you can factor into your hour as well. And I do have a general idea of how many things you can get. I know all of this is RNG, but um, just want to talk about like trash loot plus my averages in terms of like accessories that you could factor into your hour plus uh, Agris and everything so yeah uh let's see i guess we'll start off nowadays with the uh i don't know this is kind of hard to start off with but let's start off with 160 this is a good baseline so poly's forest is a good way to get combat and xp but if you grind there enough like you do get a decent amount of specters energies and capra stones um, so I think this is a just overall good area for everyone. And if you are looking to make your own black stars early on, um, you could collect a lot of Spectre's energies, but there are better spots for that. So I think this is just a good entry level. And then everything else, I don't know too much about it. Now, this one is a decent one. Blood Wolf Settlement. Now, the reason why this one is good is for multiple reasons. One... You're here for your infinite potion piece, the half moon Cagdenac, and the pity pieces. But also, the Cagdenac pieces right here, the orange ones. Remember how back in the day we would all grind these and then we're all just feeling like we just got baited because it's not the purple one that we all wanted? Nowadays, if you turn these into the dark uh, fang valor crystals, um, dark red fang. These are like 400 mil. If you turn them into the crystals, these are like one of the end game crystals that a lot of people use. And so back in the day, uh, people would value the orange Cagdenax at like 30 mil because that's what you turned them in for and that's what they were sold for. And ever since they buffed the crystal system, I believe that this is actually worth your time now. So even if you get one that's like I think after crafting costs, let me see. So you get the Cagnanac and the Black Magic Crystal. Yeah, no, it's about like 400, 400 mil after taxes if you're trying to sell it. But even for myself, like just to give you an idea, um, I do actually use uh, some of these crystals as well. So there's this one. Yeah, so I actually do t use two of them and a decent. So like 400 mil an hour if you get them and you might get multiple. I think it's a very solid spot and of course you are going for everything else so trash loot it's not so great but like the rare drops are not terrible here plus you get a lot of capris and everything so for a 190 area i think this is a very solid one 
Centaurs, as we all know, Centaurs is probably the most silver for an entry level player. And the reasoning why is because it's just one big oval rotation. Some classes have it easier than others. This is an aggro spot, admittedly. Um, but yeah, you just uh, trash loot plus aggro, it stacks up. And yeah, so like a new player grinding here, I think you'll actually make a lot of silver. Probably, I would say between 500 to 1 billion silver an hour. That factors a lot into what class you play, uh, how well you know your rotation. And of course, like whatever you get. But for like a 190, getting over 500 mil an hour, I think is very solid. Um, so yeah, this is probably up there in like the top five or maybe even top three of most silver an hour for a new player to intermediate level player. So for the AP and DP requirements, this is very solid. Um, Shuriken Daytime. This is actually one we talked about in our XP video. And I think this one is solid because uh, this has a lot of um, drops that you can get. This is admittedly an aggro spot, in my opinion. Uh, but you get roughly around like five to 800 mil an hour, in my opinion. Plus, you get the pieces plus artifacts and everything. In my opinion, the rate of which the accessories drop is pretty high. So I've gotten a lot an hour and... I've grinded all the pity pieces here as well. So I think I would say I probably have maybe 50 to 60 hours grinded here total throughout my lifetime. And on average, I make eh, a pretty decent amount. So I think this is a solid spot for silver. Nighttime is a different mechanic where you're only basically going for the ancient pity piece or not pity piece, but the full uh, infinite potion drop. So this one, you're here for that one. But during the daytime is a good grind spot. Uh, Sakraya Upper. So, I ad admittedly, I think people grind Sakraya Upper for the Rich Merchant Ring and uh, the Ancient Shards, but nowadays, now that you can sell Abyssal Essences on the market and all of these, like the Ancient Seals, even the black one, here is max price because people go for Deborekas, which are endgame accessories. And so these are max price. These are going down a little bit, but I mean, they're still worth a lot. So I think both upper and lower Sakraya are both very good for silver. I think you get a higher drop rate for Tungrad rings in lower, but I've seen people get it in upper as well. Obviously it's in the loot table. So yeah, I think it's a very good spot. Uh, the trash loot's not so good, but you are getting the silver through items, which is a fine. Um, Next we have... Renaros and Monchums. Now, these are pretty decent spots for not only the infinite potion pieces, but you get a lot of accessories here as well as Capra Stones, which add up to your total. So if you are within the 240 area, I do believe both of these spots are very solid. And so you get like three goals done in one infinite potion pieces. You could get Spectre's Energies, and if you need Capris, that's good as well. And the XP is decent for both of them. So, yeah, these are just, in my opinion, overall good spots. Thornwood. Uh, regular Thornwood and Dekia Thornwood are very solid for XP. I, I have videos of that as well. And you're going here for, one, the silver, because Ominous Rings drop pretty frequently, as well as decent amount of Capris Stones. Uh, the trash loot is okay. I think that if you were to go for trash loot alone, uh, Histria is probably a little bit better. But you are going for the um, like lung piece, Inspector's Energies. So Thornwood, in my opinion, is the best spot for Inspector's Energies. If you know what they're used for, it's for crafting Black Star weapons and or I guess armors. But you shouldn't be crafting Black Star armors in general. So... Yeah, that's what I think. Um, this is a very solid spot. You can get... I've heard people saying they can get, like, a lot of ominous rings an hour more than average. So I think it's a decent option. History of Ruins. I have a, probably about, like, three to 400 hours in this spot. I was going for the Elton piece. And for all of you who... Are going for your compass, I would say now is a pretty good time because the item drop rate is up. 
And I have a video. It took me about 500 hours to get all three pieces in um, Achman and Histria. So yes, I do have a lot of experience in Histria. I would say it's better to use Agris in this area because one, um, the trash loot is pretty decent, which got buffed within the past six months as well. And going for the red shards, if you are an endgame player of crafting, uh, Deborekas is solid. Uh, the black shards, man, I, do you guys remember when black shards used to be like 60 to 70, maybe upwards 100 mil, and then that mega tank, but red shards went up in price by a lot? The wild, how that works, isn't it? Um... Capra stones plus the scroll of written language or ancient language uh, to make your or like turn them into mem frags is a very solid spot. And then uh, accessories are pretty regular here. So I think Histria, I've definitely had a lot of over 1 billion silver an hour runs. And for a 250 entry level grind spot, I think nowadays it's like actually really good. So yeah, Histria is a low key good spot. And um, the hardest part is getting yourself into there, but there are ways to like guarantee it. Uh, so if you have a sage tagged and you can go into the desert and then there's an NPC that like you just pick which one you want to go to instead of finding a portal. But there are ways if you want to RNG it, uh, there are I can guarantee you I can tell you whether something is an Aquaman portal or a history of portal every time there's a like a little yellow glow around the portal. And then if there's like, so there's a black portal. And then if there's a yellow glow around it, that means it's Histria. If there's no glow, it's Aachman. Uh If that made no sense, just Google it. But I can guarantee you, if you showed me a screenshot, I would be able to tell you every single time. Aachman is, it's not so good for silver. It's not, it's better than before because they buffed the trash loot. And then the, obviously the red shards are very, very rare. And then you, you need to grind here for the compass eventually. But if you are within a 250 and you only have to pick one, uh, history is significantly better. Kratuga Ancient Ruins. This spot has been buffed and then nerfed multiple times over the past years. And I think this is an overall good spot for both XP, silver, and artifacts. In fact, this is the only spot that gives all the artifacts that are notable. Um... So if you are trying to go here and target a specific artifact, I think this is a solid spot just because in my opinion, like for example, let's say you're going for a magic AP at Monchums, right? But this spot also gives magic AP. The rate of which you get artifacts in these other spots because there's only three of them is a lot lower than if you were to grind Kratuga. So because you have a higher chance of getting more artifacts in here, that means the pool of you getting the one you want is always going to be higher. And for realistic numbers, I've grinded Kratuga for probably uh, just 50 hours since it came out. And I've grinded here for hundreds and I've gotten less artifacts here. And it's still a one in three RNG compared to here where I've gotten basically everything in less hours here than I did in any other spot. Plus the silver is pretty decent. You do have to use Agris in my opinion. So it's a time gated grind spot. But if you're just here for artifacts and everything, probably the place to be. Star's End. I struggle to recommend this spot in 2023 and going forward because this spot used to be very good back in the day. Um, the way it feels now is if you get a distortion earring, that's like over 300 mil. If you get it, at least one in an hour, you're doing fine. If you don't get a disto in an hour, it does not feel like a good hour. I can guarantee you that. So back in the day, a few years ago, it was pretty solid. Nowadays, I think with all the spots and especially this being a 260 plus area, I just it's hard to recommend it unless you are trying to enhance devos, which don't sit on the market. At least I don't think so. Uh, they could be. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, it's hard to recommend it. Sakraya Underwater is very solid. The way they buffed this spot recently, obviously black shards are used for Debereka accessory crafting. And they also made the Abyssal Essences sellable on the market. 
which can be used to craft endgame elixirs, such as the frenzy ones. And I think just overall, like, uh, the silver an hour, I guess it really just depends on how fast you can clear, but I think you can make roughly around 700 to over a bill an hour. It also depends on how many red shards and tongue you get, but I think it's a very solid spot for a 260 zone. So, yeah, underwater, decent, and you get around... In my opinion, as a Dark Knight, I got around, like, 60 Abyssal Essences in an hour on top of maybe, like, one Tongue Red and a lot of Capris and Shards. So, yeah, that's where the money comes in. Uh, the Trash Root itself is it's okay, but a lot of your money is coming from uh, Abyssal Essences and you know how to turn it into Frenzies and then selling those things. But, yeah, I think it's overall a good spot. People need to grind here if you want these anyway so it could be you selling it and it's a decent chunk of silver Gyphon upper this is i would say more of an xp spot than silver but it's not bad like uh capris drop like candy here tongue grads aren't really the highest drop rates but you do get a lot of other stuff as well um so the hardest part, in my opinion, is finding a group to grind with for multiple hours. But I think you can make, like, between 600 to over a bill an hour. I guess that depends on RNG. Um, but I think it's overall a solid spot. Um, it's been tweaked so many times over the years that, like, I think overall is better than years ago. Um... Padex is still trash. That's still like 500 mil an hour or less. And the hardest part is getting to the Paddock's Island, which is down by Pirates. Uh, if you don't know where Paddock's Island is, it is over here. Uh, the hardest part about any ocean grind spot is getting there. And so I think the reason why anyone would be at Paddock's is because it has a rich merchant ring piece, which it doesn't actually show you in the drop table. Um, where is it? Where are we? They don't have it, but you can get it here. I know this because this is an endgame item. They should show treasure items here like they do in all the other ones, but they, for some reason, just don't show uh, rich merchant ring pieces. Why? I don't know. Ethereal earrings are straight DP. Um, I, I struggle to see many people using it. I think if your goal is for a DP one, you use something else. I'm not 100% sure. Not a good spot. You're there for a treasure item. <clears throat> uh, Murrowax Labyrinth. I believe this spot got low-key nerfed recently. I talked to another streamer that actually grinds here on a regular, and they would probably make over a bill an hour. And it's kind of knowing timings, and I think they told me it got nerfed. But, like, if you like instance grinding that's not Marnie Realmed, uh, this is a unique spot that I wish they would add more. Like, it's a cool concept in terms of grind spot, but it's kind of one of those things where you never know. So, the silver an hour, I guess, depends on what you get. You could also go for the embers here, too, but I don't know. Jade Starlight Forest is a very solid spot for silver as well, because if you use Agris, the trash loot kind of just multiplies. So, in my opinion, like, you're here for not only the flame, which is for the Labresca uh, helmet. You do get a lot of trash loot, and it's one of those things where you, I hope you have a lot of weight in your, like, bag, like, whatever, weight limit, and then bring your horse as well. So, Jade Starlight... Probably a very decent spot for silver. I've definitely grinded here a lot going for embers and flame. And I'm just glad I'm done. I think it's a very solid spot. And it's easy to grind. It's like one big triangle. Like there's three packs. You fight those. Elite spawns. You kill the elites. And then repeat. Bloody Monastery is a decent spot for silver. Um, in my opinion... Your silver is also kind of dependent on how many moon split nails, which is for the lunar necklace, which is the accuracy necklace that people use, and also how many crimson bells you have. So the, what the crimson bells do is like you use it and then it spawns a lot of enemies for five minutes or something. 
and then i think it might be five or ten minutes i'm not 100 percent sure i think but anyway um <clears throat> summons a lot of enemies and then uh your trash loot just gets multiplied by your bells and then the moon slit nails are just the uh, accessory for the area plus the drain night thingies which you'll probably be going for so I think, in my opinion, this is probably between like 700 to, I guess, upwards 1.5 bill an hour, depending on how you do in RNG. Or camp is probably a solid like 700 to 1 bill an hour. Just no matter how good or bad your RNG is, you're probably making like 700 bill or 700 mil an hour here. And I thought this is a like, I think this is the best. Elvia spot in my opinion because one it's consistent two it gives a lot of uh xp as well so you're getting a lot of silver and xp and it's right near town so if your weight limit isn't maxed out um you could always just go back to town really easy it's right next to Heidel and um yeah I think this is overall like probably top five in my opinion Hex Sanctuary. I remember about a year ago, this was actually a very decent spot because crystallized despairs were probably around 50 to 60 mil. And then you could probably get like one or maybe like 10 an hour, maybe more. And so that was like 500 mil just from crystallized despairs. And then the trash loot, you would get a lot. So you, this was at least one bill an hour, but it also depended on how many crystallized despairs you got. So it kind of got toned down just because um, crystallized despairs aren't as expensive as they used to be. But I think on average for a 300 plus area, you're making about like 800 mil an hour. In the probably 100 hours I have in Hex Sanctuary, I've never gotten a distortion earring. So if you want the distos, you're better off grinding Star's End. I've never gotten a blessed soul fragment either, and admittedly, the drop rate is probably mega low. Um, so basically, you get enough to crystallize the spares, and then you turn it into a soul fragment. So either way, you can guarantee this, but you just have to grind the spares more. So decent spot, not as good as it used to be, but it's still good. Um, I think they actually buffed Giant's Outpost recently. I haven't tested it since, but I heard it was solid. Olin's Valley. Um, this one is hard to describe because one, you have to get a party of three or two plus yourself. And then the Olukas kind of go up and down in price depending on like how much the crystals cost at the time. And then do you have a good party for Venomous Night Fangs? And are you going for the Rich Merchant Ring here? So in my opinion admittedly i only have maybe about like 30 hours here but like the hardest part for me is finding a good group and um like it's kind of a multi-step process so in my opinion i think i made around at least like 800 to a bill an hour that was my average and it also it really just depends on crystal prices and how often do you run the venomous fangs which is a, pro a, a good solid 100 mil or so if you run them in a full group uh and how many you run I, of course but yeah i think olin's is very solid for silver um it is more of a mechanics check anyway because you have to like kill the arm and then you can't kill the arm too fast though you kill the arm and then you just dodge the big swings and i've seen like people with way more gear than the recommended get like one-shotted by a huge slam on the ground so, like, if you're not careful, you could still die. Um, but overall, if you can do this efficiently, I think the silver is solid. Hardest part, probably finding the group. Ash Forest is straight trash. Like, the reason why you're at Ash Forest is straight up for the Debereka necklaces. Um, if you're going for the Orzeka lungs or the leaves, this is the best spot for it. Um, but everything else, XP is trash. Silver is trash. Um, you're here for the Debos. If you don't get one in an hour, you feel really bad. And I have to be back there again because my goal is to get 10 Debos. So it is what it is. Gryphon Underground actually got buffed in the past like six months, I think. And 
Like overall, it is the best XP in the game for endgame players. Uh, you do get a lot of uh, trash loot and a lot of the other accessory drops as well. So I think overall, for the amount of XP you get as well, making between 700 to a billion silver an hour here, I think is very solid. Um, it is pretty mechanically intensive as well. Like you just kind of um, have to know what you're doing first, which is very easy to learn the mechanics here. But overall, um, very good spot. I think you should definitely go here. And especially if you're trying to push level 66, it's a pretty decent spot for silver. Now we're going into the super endgame areas. Dark Seekers Retreat is the newest spot they added into the game. I have about 60 hours into Dark Seekers and I have exactly one artifact. You can get the pity pieces to craft another one, which I'm trying to do right now. And also you go for the flame, which is for the Ator shoes. Um, so with that said, I am so burnt out of this grind spot after like 60 hours in like two and a half weeks. And man, I think on average, I think I make 500 to 600 mil in trash loot. No, no agris. Um, well, actually, no, I don't know. I think I make like between seven to eight K trash loot on a yellow no aggress and then it also depends on how many embers or uh fragments you get which are very rng dependent so if at worst you get nothing you're probably making around 400 mil if you get pretty decently lucky or just even average getting a few of these fragments you could probably shoot it up to like 700 to a billion silver and if you get mega lucky with the flame or an artifact that's a free 10 bill but at end game at least right now, you these, this is the best artifact in the game. So you're probably going to be using it for yourself. And the flame is for the shoes, which are very new as well. So you're here for personal gain right now. Maybe in a year from now, it might be different. But who knows? City of the Dead, you're here for the telescope piece, which is the treasure item. And of course, a lot of the silver you get come from Essence of Devouring and the Origin, which is basically giving yourself free fail stacks. Um, in my opinion, this spot is not so great. I was never a kind of a person who cared too much about, you know, those like 1 to 10 million silver or trash loot challenges that people do. But I wanted to see how many or how much trash loot I can get uh, before I get the telescope piece in the area. I don't have it, but I'm at 738,000 trash loot. And yeah, we still have to grind it, which... The spot is not terrible, it's kind of slow mechanically, and I just want it to be over. But, City of the Dead... Uh, it really just depends how many essences you get an hour. If you don't get any, the hour feels pretty bad, but ideally you're here for the uh, telescope pieces. Um, admittedly, I don't know how Elvia, or I guess Dekia Turos is, I haven't grinded there. But uh, if anyone does, let me know. If you are going for the flame of despair for your Fallen God armor, I think it's better to just buy it off the market, realistically, if you can. And then, I believe they Turos just sit on the market, so... If you're going for accuracy accessories, I would just grind the best spot you can and buy them. Dekia Olins is the only spot you can get Debereka Earrings, which is very rare. Um... These are the same things to make the Debarekas. It's just the one you craft it and one is a straight drop. Uh, Dekia Olens is kind of scary if you don't have a lot of gear. Uh, it's a lot stronger than regular Olens, of course, and things spawn faster. So if you have enough gear, you'll be good. I have maybe a solid five hours in here, and then I just had other goals to go for. But yeah, maybe one day. Who knows? Thornwood. Arguably the best uh, silver grind spot in the game. You do need some gear and knowledge of how to play your character pretty well. Uh, you do get a lot of ominous rings an hour. Obviously, Dekia has always been the buff version of the normal zone. And uh, accessories, in theory, drop more than regular. So, yeah. I think this is probably the best spot in the game for silver. You do need some gears as well. 
but if you can grind it, you'll be fine. Dekia Ash Forest. It sucks. I hate this spot. If you're going for Deborekas, just grind a regular Ash Forest. Things are scary. Uh, there's a very high risk of dying here versus regular. Um, so after testing it for maybe... I would say I have... Probably about less than 10 hours in Dekia. But I have over 100 in regular. So the rate does not feel any better here, in my opinion. Um, Cyclops land, admittedly, I don't have experience there. Quint Hill is... This spot is unique, because you know in this game, everything is fast-paced, right? So, like, you go from pack to pack to pack and grinding. You know, the fast-paced nature of Black Desert is what a lot of people go for. This one is where, like, you go from pack to another pack, but each one is, like, one minute. And, um... It's just like, I don't like the slow pace of this grind, but I heard it's pretty decent silver. But I have, I don't have experience myself doing it, but it is what it is. Uh, Crypt of Resting Thoughts. You are here for the Deborah belt. I think um, in terms of trash loot, it's probably around 600 mil an hour. I guess it depends on if you're using like yellow scroll or not. But Capris, I heard is decent. If you get an Abyssal Gaze or a Debereka Belt, you're doing fine. If you don't, you're not doing fine. But yeah, you're here for a Debereka, it's not really silver. And Tungrad Ruins. Actually, this one has the highest AP requirement. Like, I know 730 gear score sounds scary, but it is very high silver an hour. And like, I think people are saying it's one in the top five as well. But yeah, telescope piece. We're going to have to be there again in the future because I have to do it. And um, yeah, so highest silver in the game, arguably. But yeah, so with that said, I am going to run through everything in region. So now that we've gone through everything from lowest to highest AP, just to give you a quick recap. Uh, underwater is decent silver. Upper is fine, but it's not the highest. Or camp in here. In Serendia, highest money. Bloody Monastery is decent as well. Silver for Calpheon. Um, Hex Sanctuary is decent. People said Quint and Cyclops are decent, but I don't have too much experience there. Star's End if you want Distos. Uh, regulars are relevant. Madaya, Kratuga is good for in, like mid-level players. And I think that's it here. Valencia, Histria, and Achman are decent. Centaurs is very good for uh, newer players. And I think that's it here. Kama Sylvia actually has some of the best grind spots in the game for both XP and silver. So Gyphon Under, very solid. Gyphon Upper, very solid. Forest, Renaros, and Monchums are decent. Uh, Mirror Mock is okay. Polly's Forest is good entry level. Dregan area, we have Sherikin during the daytime and Blood Wolves, very solid. Um, Odalita, Thornwood is solid. Olin's is good. If you can grind Dekia, Olin's is good. And especially Dekia Thornwood, very high silver an hour. Uh, Mountain of Eternal Winter, Jade Starlight Forest, and Murwax are decent. Ulakita. Ulakita is dependent on if you get the rare items. Let's just say that, but that's about it. So... With that said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was like 33 minutes, but if you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a quick like on the video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you guys come back. I make videos for beginners, returning players, and people who are looking to get better at this game. And I've been playing Black Desert since the beta, and I would say I do have a lot of random knowledge about this game. And when I first started, I didn't have a guide to help me. I just kind of have to figure everything out. So I want to share all my knowledge with you guys. And hopefully some of these are actually informative. And with that said, that's all I want to talk about today. Stick around for more new stuff tomorrow. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.